Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess playing E4 today. Uh, apologies for the slightly poor camera setup that I've got going on here. Um, we see a Karo Khan though. Um, I've just got back to university. That's, oh my god, 93, play E6. This, I've been wanting to show you guys this for so long. G4, the sheer of attack in the Karo Khan. We then play Knight G to E2 after forcing this bishop back here. Um, I've played this opening 10 times. And I think I've got an 80% win rate uh, with one of the games being a draw. So we go h4 here, I believe, straight after this bishop, ruthless attacking stuff, and then knight to f4. That's why we go via e2, so we can put the knight on f4. Um, there is now an insane amount of pressure on this pawn, which we can take, I believe. I do quite like taking this. It means that this bishop is kind of stuck holding g7. Um, we can then, yeah, okay, we're going to take this on h5 here. This is just awesome. This is uh, all preparation, actually. And uh, yeah, just what a, what a very interesting way to play against the Karo Khan. You're not going to get any kind of boring, you know, all pawns game. It's it's attacking, you know, it's uh, we got this knight here on h5 already. So queen b6, obviously there's pressure on b2, so we can't really play bishop e3 very comfortably, uh, even though we might like to play such a move um i think it does make some sense to go bishop d3 here i'm expecting my opponent to play c5 though and that's the only problem because i'd want to play bishop e3 to reinforce this pawn um but we can't yet if i played bishop d3 and we saw takes here and i went rook here there would then be there would then be uh queen to a3 so, what if I went like knight to a4 here? I mean, the queen doesn't have a whole lot of squares that it can actually go to. Uh, there is this check though, but then I can play c3 and the queen holds the knight here. So I actually, I mean, I do kind of like the move knight to a4. It seems a little weird, but I'm going to go for it. I mean, we're, we're putting the knights on the rim just because... This is just funny that I can now play c3 and both my knights are on the edge of the board. Uh, a highly uh, not advised, you know, principle in chess. But oh well, this is what we've this is what we've gone for. Um, if I go b4 here, what happens? Takes, takes, takes a check. Bishop d2. You can pick this up. Probably not the best idea. If I take this and we see knight takes, then I guess knight takes. If bishop takes, maybe I've got takes here. I really like this. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna take. We're gonna take on uh, c5. Hopefully, we can draw the bishop out. Um, if we, if the bishop doesn't come out, then we're gonna see knight here, uh, knight c5, queen c5, and then if queen c5 is there, I can play you know bishop e3 with tempo on the queen. Um, and it doesn't really seem that the queen has very comfortable places to go. Wow, knight takes e5 though. That's interesting. What if I go bishop f4 now? Where does the knight go? Does it come to c4, really? I take, takes. Um, maybe I should be trying to reinforce this pawn, actually. In fact, you know what? Why am I not just going to play b4? We attack the queen. The queen cannot go to, like, many, many, many of the possible squares that she might want to venture to. Actually, there are only two moves, I believe. Queen c7 and queen d8. We see queen c7. And now what about bishop f4? Just immobilizing the knight there, just pinning that to the queen. This is ridiculous. Bishop f4, we pin the knight to the queen. And the idea of this, ladies and gentlemen, is to go bishop to b5 check. Because if you can't block this with the knight because of the pin enacted by my bishop on f4, then, oh, here we go. I love this. Bishop b5 check. Where are you going with your king? You have to move the king here. Because there's nothing you can block with uh, without losing your queen. So, yeah, my opponent steps their king across. Now, of course, I have to move my knight here. Or maybe I don't. The position's so dynamic, I might not have to. I, I should probably move my knight, though. <laughs> Oh, this bishop is not having a good time at all, I must say. Uh, knight g3 seems to be the only move that preserves the knight. I'm just wondering 
whether there is some means of like, like say I go check, bishop g5 check, then what do you do? Um, I guess you could block with the bishop, even playing f6. Play f6. Oh no, you play f6, I take. So check, you can't play f6. You block with the knight, that seems stupid. I get like knight to f6 and then the game's got to be over from there. So bishop g5, bishop e7 seems to be kind of forced. And then, I mean... I, mm, I then, I don't know, my bishop seems to be well placed, pinning this knight here. If I take this, we see knight takes. Oh, and then I go, you know what, I like this, bishop g5, because why not? I want to go into f6, uh, and frankly, my opponent is not going to stop me. If they go here with the king, then I can just hop into f6. And if we see takes, takes, I mean, rook by g8, that's going to be horrible. I could even play move g5. And just lock this bishop away forever. That will be so funny. I might just do this for the uh, the pure entertainment value. Also, just watching out for these knights checks. We cover both of them. Right, here we go. Check. I doubt that taking with kings is a good idea. Although that actually could be. I didn't really consider that. Hmm. Maybe that was ill-advised. Maybe the bishop was too valuable to trade off there. I was assuming that if knight takes, I get knight to f6, and that looks really strong for me. But if king takes... Okay, we do see knight takes. We'll analyze king takes uh, afterwards, but knight to f6 here. Now we're talking. Now our knight is, is going to be outposted if we want in the f6 square. Our bishop and knight link up very, very nicely here. I'm just waiting for the right moment to, you know, I don't know, sacrifice the knight and break through here. I mean, that's almost certainly going to be a good idea. At, um, actually, maybe knight f4. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, also, you know, this bishop is, is not not having a good time at all. If you move a6, that doesn't strike me as very good because, yes, you kick the bishop, but maybe I just go in here. And my knights are some of the greatest pieces I've ever seen in my life. If I go here, you take this, I take here. Yeah, unfortunately, knight to b6 looks far too strong. My knights are, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I love the sheer of variation. If you are not inspired to play the sheer of variation after this, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with you. I might not win this game, but um, with, uh, with these knights, I think it's it's quite likely that I will. So I need to find out how to convert it though. So wait, maybe maybe now I sacrifice on here. It seems like a possibility and just bring the rooks to the if we play knight takes here. Okay. Pawn takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, check. What if the king just moves? There may, be, there may be nothing very impressive about that. And if rook d1, then just rook d8. Okay, yeah, let's not let's not do anything rash just yet. Let's instead preserve the bishop with just bishop to a4. I mean, it seems to make sense. I want to take my time because this could be an absolutely immortal game uh, if I play my cards right. Or play my pieces right more accurately. I'm not playing cards. Bishop to a4. Okay, you know what? I'm going to play bishop to a4, and I'm just going to ask my opponent, what are you doing? Like, what, what are any of your pieces doing? What is this bishop doing? What is this rook doing? What is this rook doing? Your king can't move. It is held absolutely at the mercy of these knights, which are just ridiculously well placed. And even though my king is well in the open, it's just unassailable. Okay, wait, knight to, knight to c6. See, now it feels more likely that I can sacrifice on here because the knight's no longer protecting it. I feel like I should just go for it. But which knight do I want to sacrifice? Uh, we should probably calculate this. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes with check. You can't block with anything because this knight holds d7. So then the king has to move. And if we see king here... Oh no, that's not even legal. Oh, lads, we're going for it. Knight takes here. 
sacrificing to open up the king, bring my queen in. Once the queen comes up, we can slot the rook into d8. The bishop is hopefully going to cut this diagonal. You've just got to believe in this. You just have to believe in this. With the knight here on, on b6. Okay, the king comes up. Maybe you don't have to believe in this. <laughs> this might have been a very poor idea. Should I just castle queenside? That'd be so funny. Wait, maybe I can. I mean, we've already played enough crazy moves. Let's just castle queenside. Bring the rook to the d-file and vacate the e1 square to play rook e1. That's my idea. I'm gonna, one of the rooks is almost inevitably gonna come to d8 here. There we go. Now, I feel as though something may have gone wrong. Queen, oh, if we go here, it's maybe g5. How do I do this? Right, we're going to step back with the queen. We're going to keep enacting this pin. We've got the move f4 that is coming. Um, if rook takes here, I can always take with the rook. We do see this move that I was expecting. Okay. I'm thinking we can just step back. And that, yes, this bishop's sort of been freed, but surely this king is weak enough that I don't care. I think this works. Sort of. Oh wait, but I step back to here and we see like bishop here maybe. I need to also hurry up. That is a uh, something that I should keep my mind on. Queen e two. Okay, if we see bishop d three, I might just have to sacrifice a rook. The rook takes. Rook. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm also incredibly tempted to try and play uh, pawn takes g5 in a minute. Just open up both the rooks. I need to get this bishop on like b3. Because also, whoa, okay. Now I take with this and I'm threatening knight to d5 check. So you've got you've to gotta do something about that. In fact, did I have that before? No, because my queen was on b5. Okay, but now if, if, if rook d8, which is, I guess, a pretty logical move, we can go check. Rook takes. Oh, this has got to be good. This just has to be good. Check. You have to take with rook, otherwise you lose your queen. Now we are double attacking this knight. We are also attacking this knight. The knight is pinned to the king here. So we see the king step up. But now I go check, maybe? And you're forced to step back. Unless I go bishop. Oh, what? Right, let's give this check. I don't have much time. The king has to go back. Then we've intercepted the queen's defense of the knight. So if I now take this knight here, you can't recapture with the knight because it's pinned. If you capture with the pawn, I take the knight. If you capture the queen, I mean, I can take the queen or the knight. I think, I think I'm just winning now. I think everything's collapsed and I'm winning. I'm very excited to analyze this one. This is an absolutely crazy game. But uh, we have, yeah, here we go. Check, pick up the knight. And then how do I do this? Check. Wait, let me just do some calculation. We go check. King here. I guess check maybe here. I don't know. I can always pick up the bishop. I think this has to be the right check to give. We force the king here. I can pick up the bishop. Oh no, whoa, the bishop blocks. Okay. But then we go check here. You have to move. Okay. Um, now let's pick up this pawn. You have to go back to protect the bishop, but then I go check. And either you're going to lose the bishop, you, sat, you have to sack the queen. I think we see resignation here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the only legal move actually is to, is to take this rook, I believe. There we go. What a game. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Let's go through the game. So we played e4, of course. C6, D4, D5, E5, Bishop, F5. Let's turn on the Masters database here. You see Karakhan advanced variation. We go for the Van der Veel attack. And then push the pawn in. This is known as the Shirov variation or the Shirov attack. Um, you see, as we see here, Alexei Shirov uh, won a lot of games with this move. So, drops back. We play Knight GT2. The Knight comes in here. The main move is C5. And yeah, as we see, 25 Masters, uh, Maxime Vachier-Legrave included, plays uh, h 
for him. We see h5, knight f4, we're sticking to these master games. This is awesome. Bishop steps back, and yeah, this is where my opponent deviates from the master games. Damn, this went wrong here. Okay, let's turn on the evaluation. We take the pawn, perfect. Queen here, knight a4. Okay, queen check, c3. It seems reasonable. C5. That's a blind. That's just a blunder. Oh my god! Does B5 trap the knight? It does. Because if I go on passant, then there's takes, and my knight is still going to be trapped, probably. Unless we go like what, B4. Oh no! But then the rook attacks the knight. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see B5. That's a mistake. Should have taken with the knight, but my opponent doesn't realize that. Um, we attack the queen with B4. Queen c7, bishop f4, and then yeah, g6 attacking this knight. As I said, letting me uh, give this check once we pin the knight. This lodges the king here. Uh, give the engine a second. There we go. And yeah, after king to uh, d8, we went for. I didn't go for queen e2. I went for this check. Queen e2. Oh, why would I not think about that? Just attack the knight twice. And if I go queen e2 and you take here, I just take here. And we hit the queen, we hit the rook. I mean, everything's a problem on the dark squares and the light squares yeah okay that would have been much more accurate i could also have brought the rook to d1 uh, okay we don't mind this was still a good move uh even though it says blunder i mean we're plus 3.3 uh it's still fine i missed queen e2 though bishop blocks and yeah this was a mistake i actually lost my advantage here i really wanted to get the knight to f6 i think i recognized that in the game actually but i shouldn't have done this because yeah my opponent could take with king and then i'm going to be forced to drop back anyway um and that is not going to be a good thing. But my opponent took with knight, which means that my intuition that knight f6 was strong was correct. Um, a6 here, knight b6. And just look at this. This is crazy. Okay, yeah. If if uh, they had taken my bishop here, then we'd have taken the knight. Queen drops back. I can step back. And just the knights are just immortal here. Um, and we're probably going to be able to sacrifice and open it up. Um, I'm interested to see actually was the sacrifice good. But we step back with the bishop. Uh, the knight comes over. Again, oh, f4. I didn't even think about f4. I think I did at some point, but only after it had opened up. Queen e2 would have made sense as well. I sacrificed... Oh, this was a sacrifice. It was a mistake, but actually, one sec, the engine doesn't hate it at all. I mean, yes, it goes from 8.2 to like 4.5, but 4.5 is still completely winning. And if this is... Oh, it's creeping up. Takes. Give it a second. I should have played f4. Okay. We took with queen instead with check. We saw king e7, and here... Oh, my God. You know what? I'm glad I played this. It was a mistake, but queenside castles was not a mistake. This this playing this variation allowed me to castle queenside here. Um, that's ridiculous. And then after the rook goes here, I stepped back. Uh, g5. Actually, got knight d5 check here. Oh, because I can take with queen. After rook takes, queen takes. I'm not attacked anymore. Rook d8. What the hell? Oh my god! Because if you take with rook, then this check. That's crazy. Okay didn't see that um instead just drop the queen back and here it's actually drawing again but i mean who would you rather play white or black do you know what i mean this is uh my opponent takes this is a blunt they had to go run away with king f8 then i mean i'm opening this up i'm coming in here you know bishop b3 i i mean yeah i i'm not surprised this one wasn't as accurate as uh, as usual on the channel rook takes d1 though um the engine starts really liking my position here and then yeah rook here i've got the move knight d5 uh, which my opponent probably missed. Rook takes, rook takes. And after the king goes here, uh, we gave this little check, which was, I think, the best move. King steps back. Again, just give the engine time to load. Jesus, 11.3. Um, and then, we, yeah, we take the knight, recognizing the pin here, that the knight can't recapture, and we are removing the defender. Very classical idea. Um, and, yeah, after the pawn recaptures, take with the queen. King drops back. Like, h5. That's ridiculous. We go check. Um... Okay, yeah, the engine's just loading. I mean, it's just taking time to see how brutal it actually is. Uh, it's mating 25, apparently. But uh, after check, queen h6, the king came up. Um, I went for check. King went back, and yeah, I've just got rook d8, which actually forces um, the king to... Well, sorry, not the king, the queen to capture the rook. There are no other legal moves. Um, even if there were, I could then take the bishop. But I'd, yeah, I'd missed that that was forced initially. However, yeah, after queen takes, queen takes, I'm sure, um, you know, you guys would not have a trouble finishing this game with these pawns this queen you could probably even like you know if the pawn was here you could probably end up doing this if you really wanted um and you're still going to be completely winning but yeah what a game 
wow that's just ridiculous thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed like subscribe comment all of that stuff to help uh progress my channel along with the algorithm and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one goodbye